did I fail? Did I fail because I wasn't concise? Did I fail because I didn't tell the bedtime stories quite right? Or did I fail because there was no ear to hear, no mind to listen, and then none to respond? What will history say of my failure? Will history find the failure important enough even to memorialize, given the persistence of the crickets? And this will be BTWRLM308. Found that round to be quite an effective round. Nice, uh, nice all around systems for that round. And so is it, folks. What's history going to memorialize as we go through this? My silence, even though I was talking for years and years, or the fact of everyone else's silence in the fact that they didn't step up in the responsibility that we were given to keep the peace and tranquility that was handed to us, that has always been historically time out of mind to be wrested from people by those that would. And it's really kind of reduces, this whole thing reduces down to real simple terms. You either get handled by somebody or you do the handling. And that can come in two directions. One, you physically have to get involved or you do things to avoid the potential or the altercation itself. And, and anybody that sticks their head in the sand is uh, going to be handled. And so this is how this really breaks all down and we could make all the excuses we want but we can get involved, and we can avoid, not evade, avoid these things. And uh, our problem today, and I'll say it over and over again, there's been a diligent group of people vigilant on their religion, the religion to rule you on a global scale, and it won't matter what the so-called country is, because it's going to be those countries are taking their, their orders from this global governance, and they will assert the policies that they can get away with. Remember, in the United States, global governance is a voluntary acquisition for you all locally. And so I've been trying to explain to you in a ways that are not jeopardy, cause you no jeopardy like a criminal side action would, or to go off on things I saw decades ago were make major mistakes for people. And we're still hearing the ramifications and the continuation of all that today where people are going to jail for a long time while the system gets rid and weeds out all those that thought they had the answer didn't realize to step back and wait a minute. We have a we are really having a major problem. We are in a war and don't realize it. And the people that are in the power position have a way to deal with us in lots of ways. That we better rethink this whole thing. And that's what I am today. I'm the rethinking of that, and I continue thinking about that. More importantly, on the thinking of it, with what I've come to, I come to what we have to do about it. And to me, it really boils down to the real simple fact in international law, that thing that's made up or presumed to be existent amongst people who recognize it. Again, it's like a contract. It's there only for those that won't breach it. But it's there to guide us nonetheless. But the, the truth about all of history of man is that if you don't resist an invasion, it takes you over. If an invasion comes in secrets, it itself upon you or inside you in your mind and allows itself to make uh, any any plants a seed and, and it finds fertile ground in you and you change it wins real simple process real simple methodology it's, it's, it's been with us forever as long as we've been men and women in the world I said in the world because there was a time supposedly right before that we weren't having to deal with this and we didn't keep that either did we so, getting back to what we can do today, and that we have to do something today. I've been attempting to give all the things I know uh, through coding, if you will. Not really so coding, but it's, I have to stretch it out a bit, because I think when it starts to get too concise, it starts to get cut out. I've been doing this for a long time, watched this whole thing come on that we've watched. I've been shown some things about how this would work, and so far I've been pretty satisfied with how I've been approaching it, and we're still here. However decisions I made, good or bad, or whatever decisions I've made to get us, uh, like again, if I, I've been asked to get on much larger, much larger uh, networks and such, 
they all seem to have a problem that wasn't fitting what I wanted to see done as far as where this thing goes in the future. In a way, I'm, I'm hoping against hope that the cream of the, the cream comes to us that are doing than, than trying to make a persuasion to everybody that won't want to listen anyway. And so we have these techniques, we have these observations. I try to show you uh, around the world how it's a reflection of ourselves. And essentially, since we're sitting in the United States of America, we sit in the, the power gang, the, the gang in the world that enforces, forces, enforces all this nonsense upon us, even though it's, and it's coming underneath this, this um, banner, this label that it's not actually accurate. We all recognize it. We only get, almost say, laugh at it, but the problem is that when you laugh at it, you dismiss that it's actually having a force and effect in the world, and that reflects on, on us on two in two ways, because it's, whatever happens you see out there may not be happening the same to, to you, but it's happening nonetheless, as I pointed out over and over. And before I get too far, uh, I got an email earlier, a couple day a day ago, ago or so, and I'll respond to it, but I want to get on air to talk to you a little bit. A little question came up Someone was interested in getting involved in doing something local for them. And they have a couple of things they want to do, not just one. Because you hear me say, just find a wrong that you want to make right. I say that to anybody who's still on the fence, who sees it wrong but doesn't quite know how to get engaged. Just find something. Those of you that have are capable, understand what you're up against, and have more than one subject matter, do, do what you can. If you can grab more than one subject matter, go ahead and take it on. I find very few people can do that right off the bat with what I now see in, over the time and experience of what goes on that uh, I still would say maybe start slow. Don't try to take on so much. But if you have three or four ideas that you want to protect or you want to work on, I wholeheartedly go ahead and tell you to do it. And I'm just going to put out the caveat that it's maybe not what you really think it is. So why don't you step into one and then step into the next as it folds together and look at what you want to do and see if you can pull them together. And a couple people are have contacted me and interested in the cannabis thing, and also land rights. Those can be brought together, so you can start with the say. And I don't know anybody's interest. It's where it start. It starts to. You know, I can't speak to anything in particular. I can just talk talk in general. If you're interested in recreational, you have a different path than if those that want to talk medical. And I'm on record to say your medical angle is probably a lot more powerful at this point than than not on the cannabis and then I also tie I my whole point about this cannabis stuff is not about the cannabis although now I see what through the life for long it's not just this week it's through for years now we've seen the the change now the truth coming out about its utility this uh, plant nature's uh, gift to man how natural it is in all of our systems throughout all Every, any any utility, whatever the system is, whether it's a men or women that need need it, or or animals, or the ecosystem, or whatever, it's a pretty nice plant generally. All those things are there to to agree to, but I'm not really speaking about that at all. My my point on all of this stuff really boils down to: we either have control of our land and what we do with it, or we don't. And if we can establish the control of the land then this other stuff really it's kind of takes a second seat. Now, I'm not saying it's a second seat condition. I'm saying where they've taken this to keep control needs to be uh, wrested from these people. This is the, your governments. I say yours because they're all deemed to be you. You're presumed to be yours while you allow it. And again, this is the thing about the subversion. It's, uh, it invades your land, and then you have to agree. You have to oust it. Ousting takes effort. And so you go back to the point is that land produces, you have land rights in production in the United States. I don't know if this is anywhere else in the world, but it's certainly in the United States of America. There was no reservations in your land uh, disposal uh, instruments called patents from the government that was agreed to be the disposer free and clear to you and having rights even against that grantor, even against the state. You have rights within that land that have been trounced for decades, decades maybe more, that if we start to assert those back, start to get rid of all this other stuff, but we, most people don't understand about that, so uh, get back to the point. If you have interests, many interests you want to solve, if you're capable to address them all, more power to you. For those of you that don't or aren't, start with one. 
and pick whatever one you want. Don't don't continue to think you need to learn enough to go do it. You're going to learn by getting into the battle. And I can only tell you with what my colleagues and I do, you don't hear much, and we continue to, it's almost this really bad position we have to take in that we have to be quiet while we're attempting to make a final victory because we can't let those that we're fighting know how we're fighting them. And so a lot of times you won't, you won't hear me come and tell you the, 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 deep, the deep stuff. Although, and I'll, I'll throw this out, if any of you are interested in cap and trade, that carbon market that we thought went away, that's part of the imposition of your life that is the so-called tax credit system for your poisoning the worth, or earth with carbon that's now integrating itself in the common vernacular of the politics from Congress through to Oregon, uh, if you are interested in looking at that and stopping it, we're, uh, got, we're working heavy on that, and uh, we have some information. I probably won't talk about it here. Uh, it's also part of the strategies. But if you're interested, we I can send you to some places that you'll, you can pick up the information you need on how to attack it. Remember, and I may not have made this very clear, you can talk about climate change, but that is a an alternative. That's a, a fraudulent disaster that they've imposed that needs a solution. That's not what you attack. Now, I can tell you all about it. We can talk about the fraud. You can talk. I don't care about the denier or the skeptic or the agree or the... I'm looking at that as a fraudulent uh, crisis that someone is using to bring an outcome. The subject matter of which becomes a taxation or a burden on your life. And this cap and trade is coming through. It's not just a carbon tax. You think that's just carbon tax. Oh, yeah, I can go through the, oh, that's your civil rights and all that. That's not even what I'm talking about, even though that's all the truth. What I'm talking about is this becomes a way to convict you without a trial and cause punitive damage upon you and only getting paid back through a tax system, which I don't even know if anybody understands what I just said. But... The point is, is that this, you don't attack climate change. That's just the fraud. Now you, there's a mech, that they're using. These people use this stuff in order to bring back. We have to resolve. We have to make the solution for this problem. They invented, fabricated, fraud. Not hoax, fraud. This is what you might understand. Some of you folks might understand about the Hegelian dialectic. But I, I advance to you that's even deeper than that. It's called really praxis, and it's even deeper than that. It just keeps, there's just people that have been doing this for hundreds of years that figured this out. But we talk about climate change. That's the fraud. That's not how they're going to bring that in. They're just using that as the leverage to scare everybody. And we don't even have to argue it. We could, but we don't have to. So for those of you that are interested in cap and trade, and you really understand the danger to everybody, and the Big, ex the mo how this is going to make your life very expensive in the future and very limited. Those of you that are interested, I don't talk too much about it. If you are interested, send me an email, Mark on the Beast at protonmail dot com. Maybe I'll send, I can not maybe I will send you links. I'll try to advise you on how you locally can address this and wherever this goes. We can we embarrass everybody that tries to bring this forward. There's so many violations. It's punitive. These legislations are punitive coming out of the gate. And I hope those of you that listen to me understand when I that listen to me for a while understand what I'm saying. Punitive. It's legislation that causes you to be liable as a punitive measure against you already. I'm gonna pa I pause a little bit here. I got to pause. I can't keep too much dead time, but. Punitive already. You're already gonna. You've been deemed to be guilty of this crime. Uh, sit back and think about that. And I looked around. And I I go through these constitutions I read, and I can just go through and copy and paste all the constitutional violations. A presumptively, or actually not even presumptive, a conviction of pres of punitive damage upon you without judgment, trial, hearing, jury, anything. On everything in life violates so many constitutional provisions that I'm just shocked at all you constitutionalists that don't step up and even do copy and paste and make a comment to this these kinds of things. I say cap and trade, but it's all of these uh, these things that advance modernization, enhancement uh, relative to your needs in life. Anyway, so I want to get too far away. I want to get back to the tabs. If you want some information for those of you that think that uh, it's, a, it's a funny name, cap and trade. This is the ta carbon tax for you already punitively being penalized, and you have to enter into the tax system in order to get credits. 
if you don't think this is an integration, this is all going to go through your digital stuff. All your eventually it'll be all digitized. This is uh, we have we are working. We're no matter where we go, we're we're getting people out. Uh, and I can explain a little bit how that works. I can send you some links. We can get people rallied up, and you can start stopping. You can start to stop the ca the cap and trade through the process system that they've established and just destroy it. It's just going to take people, as I've been telling you. This is not even, and it's no threat, no jeopardy. But so, uh, but uh, back to the question on the email. If you can do uh, quite a few things, then go ahead. My experience is it gets pretty overwhelming, so be careful on how much you 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 bite off and. For most people, I would say start off with the one thing and see how that works for you. Get your skill set up and then move into, into the next thing. So I'll, I'll, write, I'll write an email back to the, I haven't had a chance the last couple of days. Uh, again, given the opportunity, we had to embarrass a bunch of politicians in, with the law, simply just producing the law and reality. Uh, the, I've taken that option to do that instead of um, uh, my, my do my email. So, but uh, anybody who has something they want to do, go with your uh, intuition. Find something that really is really in you to do. And I say start within. Uh, make sure that you've got all the skill set. Don't think you understand a system and jump in and try to think you can swing a baseball bat or an axe or whatever and, and, and take it out. It doesn't. It's not working like that. It's a lot more subtle. And uh, but but it's still as effective when we move things through more correctly you're going to run up you're going to, this country is so infiltrated with wrong thought if i can say that wrong thought and um agenda people literally the green the green religion is not a joke the country is saturated infiltrated and surrounded where it's infiltrated and surrounded it's metastasized with this systemic thought and process so don't think you're going to walk in with the truth and reality and change it there's techniques to Get it to change. There's, like I say, make the records up front. You see a harm that looks like you can't address. It's typically able to jump in, like let's say the cops. You don't know these guys, these idiots are going to come and hurt you the next moment you walk out your house. You better think about how, uh, whether or not you can address that on the policy side, because right now that's where we are. This whole thing is based in policy. In fact, if you look at the court cases, they say if a po the policies rule unless you can show the policy's not good enough, and so they start at the bottom. And then the government works up. You know, you rarely get to the law. They always make excuses because they're given the government it's supposed to be a limited form of government. They're given the, they these supposedly independent judiciary. How can a judiciary be a part of the system of establishment? Be independent. Is your first clue. Anyway, get past that, and then you find out there's a subversion of that judicial system. It's in a private tiering organization called the Bar Association, and they're global. The rule of law and, go and democracy is what they promote, their brand, and they commit to promote sustainable development, which cannot sit and rest within the United States of America. As our lawsuit proved, when they couldn't answer, the Bar Association was sued, so were the Democratic and Republican, Republican parties, and a couple of their members, whether they be the governor or uh, senators or Republic, uh, representatives, whatever, they could not answer. Default judgment. They got caught, folks. It's sad easy. But most people don't understand that. And then they go down their track they think they have to do. Trying to get a bunch of people, let's say the, car, the um, smart meters, trying to get them to understand how you actually defeat that has been, been a very difficult path. So those of you that choose something, understand you're walking into a psychological constraint on people that don't understand. They can't, they're dysfunctional. They don't understand what, what, where to go to get the information. And then they won't step forward correctly in order to make the simplest record in the proper way. And you're going to have to work that through. It's not impossible. It's just a matter of finding those that will hear a little bit. And you want to give people a little bit. And moving that through to where you get, become functional with people again. You get, get them functional. And you stand, You what you do is you bring the objective basis that's nothing, there's nothing that can be countered by what you bring. In other words, you're not worrying about climate change. We just call it a fraud. And you, go, and you say, you, I always like the even if. Even if climate change was other than a fraud comma all right that's how you that's how i do most of this stuff when i'm countering something that's the the fraud used as a subject matter to cause alternative disputes to be resolved by the process even if what you propose as the crisis is true comma then you go on to the thing that they're attempting to subvert which is typically the law 
typically how it's supposed to work. Typically the objective basis that makes it, uh, that does produce the settlement and the peace that we hear, because they're there to destroy that. And so we see that settlement and peace destroyed. We see how the mechanisms are. There's a bigger, more obvious, it doesn't seem connected, but it is, an obvious way to cause strife with people. And I've reflected back over to the Middle East and Syria, how the United States caused this obvious fraud, the fraud of the of the terrorist, because remember, as I said, this, uh, the, the, the United States is, it's a war of terror, and the United States is the main terrorist. It creates the coalitions, it creates its own adversaries. It's, it, I mean, I don't even know why, why I even talk, I don't, I feel like I have to prove it to some people, I don't. It, you just go out and find it. If you don't know that, you're not reading in the right places. But this is the same method, but on a higher, a bigger scale, not a higher, but a bigger scale. You go put war on people. You make put them in strife, and they have to move. They have to run. We're, we talked about A20, Agenda 2030. That's the agenda to fulfill the sustainable development till 2030. It talks in there of sustainable debt. That's not just money. That is a servitude to the conditions and the obligations and duties you're imposed with. That's even to run away from war. And I wanted to po point this out in the politics and stuff that goes on, just in this one quick story, and then move on where we now see the admission of what I've been telling you is going on about how they get people to move. And when you have no capacity to fight, you will move. You will flee away from a war zone. If you have family, you'll flee as a family. This is just a natural thing. It doesn't mean you're a coward when you're not capable to, to fight the invasion. And how, how many would be, even in the United States of America, to fight the power of the United States Army if it focuses on you? I don't know. I don't know what people tell themselves in their mind, but I don't know that there's many out there that are going to survive some kind of a fabricated story when there's an invasion like here in L.A. Everybody spends the first three days being astounded by all the att attack. When in fact, if that was an actual actual military operation, you would be captured in that before that time was up. You were standing there watching them. So we're not ready as a nation to watch our own nation, our own country, the, the, the government of the United States, do again what it did in the Civil War. We don't, we're not prepared as a people. We'll talk bad, and, but we won't understand it. We don't understand that the same social, communo, fascio, fascio condition is, is infiltrated in our system that the United States government itself agrees with. I don't know if we have any concept that all the constitutionalists want to talk about what ought to happen and figure, haven't figured out that that didn't happen. And that when they, the, the responsibility to keep the republic is not a thought. It's not what you think ought to happen. It's something that was to be happening and factually, reality-wise, uh, maintained. And so we see in this report here back over there in uh, Syria, uh, we see what the Agenda 2030, what what the chaos does, what the institution of war, what, what the inc institution of strife does to people, the politics and the media say is something else, and we buy as a society that that's the case. In fact, when you go back and have more objective basis, or the pol politics is changing, because someone did resist the invasion, you start to see the the uh, the invader repositioning themselves on a global scale to continue their well. They got to go to the next plan. Returning Syrian refugees were fleeing U.S. proxy war, not Assad. And this, to me, when I read that, is a, it was a, I can't tell you how, how I couldn't believe, it, how it's, anybody would believe it was any different. When you look very carefully, the people were not against Assad, we were told that, but people were fleeing because they had to. In other words, your life gets destabilized by some crisis. And when it gets, when you have a, an assurance that, that you're going to live a little bit more normally, you'll go back to your home. This is another international truth. Every man returns to the home of his birth is a universal truth, or intends to. Now, I don't know if that holds for me, but not, not, neither here nor there. I mean, we're only region, we're only a dist short distance, I would suppose, to return. But I mean, if you were to typically, if you move across the across the world, before you die, you end up migrating back to where your home of your birth was. In fact, in my experience, I had a, helped a, a man go from. The, country, the state that he was in back to his, he wanted to move his family, his, and he was an older guy, an older wife, and he wanted to move before he died, he wanted to move back home. So I, I was able to see that he wanted to do that. He wanted to get back to where, if you will, his roots, if you will. 
And, and so there's a there's a thing about this in people. It's just a natural thing. They want to go where they understand and where they under, where they are comfortable and uh, that's familiar and familial as well. And this is the I guess another tragedy about the thing about the Gazan condition. But neither here nor there about that. I want to point out. Uh, the BBC is saying now the people are coming from Syria that fled are coming back, and they have no problems with Assad for whatever we all heard. Is the migration policy working that I've told you is in, in effect that didn't work when someone was able to start to begin? It's not over yet, but they were able to oust an invader, a couple, a number of invaders actually. That's still an ongoing process, but even so, even with the remnants of the global power is still there the people of Syria are moving back and they wouldn't be moving back if they thought uh, Assad was such a such a, a tyrant as we were told no I'm not going to get into the internal politics I'm not going to say if he was a good or bad guy I'm not going to say he didn't do anything ever bad there's all kinds of stuff that happen when you get in the seats of power what I'm saying is that the people themselves are heading back after the crisis that they were told was at least livable See, it's not over yet. They're still moving back. This is how the tenacity of people, I want to point out. So when you give up all what I'm going to talk about, all these things you can do administratively, they're coming to you like carbon uh, cap and trade, and you won't lift a finger, shame on y'all. Literally, shame on you all. All you cannabis users that won't make a letter to go point out the stupidity behind the government agencies you know are coming to take it, that you know are coming to regulate you. Shame on you all. You get what you deserve here. And how else could you con con conceive of how this is going to work? The, the answer, people go back to their homes, wherever that they thought that was, and typically it's around the area where they were born. You know, people want to help their local people. When there's uh, those of mind, like Samaritan in mind, that they want to help, they will. But again, the reflection of the United States of America against even helping your own where you live. Instead, rather causing the strife to continue, is example in this next story. And my point is not to point this out, even though he needs to be credited for what he did, is we now need, because Arnold Abbott has died, we need to have him replaced in Florida. Arrested several times for feeding the hungry, champion of the poor Arnold Abbott dies at 94. So the gentleman that we reported behind the woodshed that was, uh, well, I think I did it once or twice, he was arrested for feeding the homeless. When you have a country that is allowing that amongst your own people, you have to rethink what you think your country is. And if you're not, I don't care what you think your, start, your research tells you. I don't care how knowledgeable you think you are. You've lost your soul. You've lost your ability to, the spirit in you is dead. We need a couple people to replace Arnold Abbott. Rest in peace. For his help and what he figured, he wanted to help homeless people. In a country where the government, it's, the governments will attack someone like that for doing so. They create the homeless, they create the strife, and then they create anybody that comes to help them in any way. Oh, they say you're not regulated. Irrelevant point, but that's what they say. Because everyone's in the mindset of, I'm controllable, I'm controlled, I need to be. Do you think a man like that would be fe feeding these homeless people bad food? He was never found to be feeding bad food. He was just caught and arrested. And eventually, I think he, if I remember right, I think the second story we did about him was he prevails against that imposition. So the government was doing something that at least a law that was actually looked at there said you're not really you really can't do this but remember now that I'm thinking about this remember they didn't win because he was a good Samaritan they did it based on the free speech rights of the organization he created the legal entity the person he created in order to go do that you, you get how twisted this becomes if you, I hope you picked that up when I did that story I pointed it out now that I remember this but we need more Arnold Abbotts out there he went down. We need two more two more people to step up. We need four more people to step up, if you're so inclined. I'm sure that that organization isn't going to go down, but again, it's about that organization, isn't it? If you don't think that men and women are thrown to the curb, not just, not just the homeless that need to eat. I'm talking about Arnold Abbott, the man. 
was not looked at for what he wanted, but it did not vindicate himself on what he did for his reasons. It was that he had an organization that was vindicated for its right to speak. A fiction. If you don't understand, if you don't quite get this so-called straw man stuff, so-called, because it's not even that either for all y'all that are thinking it is. But uh, so we've lost a we've lost someone who cared for people in Florida. The government points out it wants to beat us down. The crisis is created. The crisis is not allowed to be solved. That should pick you pick your interest just a little bit. And I don't mean just in Florida. This is how it's done. This is part of that agenda. This is I don't know if people see that, but this is all part of the same thing. And your military is involved uh, to, to beat you down. That's the thing that the only thing that they have in this. So, move on to, do you think he was feeding them bad food? Well, just as a side note going over, an organic diet re- rapidly reduces pesticide exposure. Well, my point on this is that uh, there's a big contention whether or not eating organic, to, this is by the people that are the scientists and don't know their political lobbyists for industry. They'll tell you that it doesn't matter. There's studies that they'll show you that doesn't matter. But we find here another study, a peer-reviewed study, environmental research that says if you stop, if you start taking on an organic diet, and uh, you will reduce your pesticide exposure all by itself. Now here's the problem with all this: these pesticides are supposed to be tested to not be persistent, or which you may not be aware of, they're persistent only to an adjust an, an acceptable level. And that's the thing I think people have missed. It's like the Clean Water Act. It's not, to, it's not an act to clean water. It's an act to pollute water just a little bit and be okay with it. So you have organic diets with a farmer that doesn't use pesticides, which would be because even organic pesticides leave residues that are harmful to you. So those of you that don't think that, you need to go research more there. But the organic, any pesticide. Uh, has problems. The the way you start to avoid that organically is you make sure your soils are really, really healthy. They're fully mineralized. So the minerals are what you find out, or at least uh, the mineral mechanisms are what you find out, re- repulse the uh, the different uh, beasties in the world that want to eat that, and they'll go somewhere, somewhere else. Uh, but uh, do you think that Arnold Abbott was feeding bad food? No. Well, for you, you're going to have to feed yourself good food and if you want to reduce the pesticides, which means they're there, folks, and you can be, and it's a proven way to reduce them, organic is a good way to, to do this. And I would suggest to you, grow your own, as they used to say for cannabis, grow your own. Just start putting stuff in here and there that you can uh, and uh, augment that problem. They're telling you we have a pesticide poisoning problem. We're tell- they're telling you the agencies of government are allowing this onto you, and there's a, there's a reason that they do that. And you need to figure that out. And if you find that to be a problem, maybe you can step up in that arena. So as we want to go poison ourselves, one of the main the big poisons in the world that people don't appreciate. Again, every, things in moderation are good, but uh, this thing called alcohol is a real serious poison. It's, I don't know of anything. It's not non-toxic uh, in your system. Now, we all have a, there's all a benefit to some of it. Well, the, what, the ethanol? Not the methanol. The methanol will kill you. So here we are. Alcohol is just a different construction. Chemical construction have a different effect in the body. But in one of the ones that people use and then uh, travel around on, uh, there's been an abuse uh, done uh, for a long time. And again, I'm always amazed that people don't notice how long it takes for so-called justice to run. It. The government has already proven to you that it is the power because it gets to set, presume, be presumptively correct even though it's absolutely lawfully wrong. And so we, as we want to be free of choice and poison ourselves and then travel around, there's a thing called alcohol that we drink, and uh, that gets us in a little bit of trouble. But the state, the state Supreme Court came back here just recently and uh, rules that mandatory DUI tests are unconstitutional. On Friday, the Kansas Supreme Court, the Kansas, isn't that where Toto lives? Kansas, get your ruby slippers, folks. Kansas Supreme Court ruled the tests, the state's DUI testing refusal law unconstitutional, setting a remarkable precedent concerned concerning forced testing on those suspected of driving under the influence. Now, I won't read again. In fact, if you want to have someone read to you 
Grimner's been doing a good job on, he's actually doing all the news I want to do. I was wondering how much I'm going to pull off here anymore on his uh, broadcast for Freedom, uh, excuse me, Freakers Ball. Uh, he's been reading some of these news articles. He'll read that to you if you want to have someone read to you. Tune in on his broadcast too and get some cool music on Friday nights. Him and Moose Girl. Uh, as I read that, I, that was reminding me, he, he did this story too. In fact, he does going to do a couple stories. I'm going to just pop uh, pop in to explain a couple things. More of how we, what we do with this and what to be careful of. The uh, They do say it's a precedent. It is only state. Now, this could have ripple effects, so you're going to have to pick this up. And to me, I don't know. I got a problem with the alcohol thing, but here's the, the violation of the state. It says that they have the right to do this. It says there's implied consent. What you read when it comes to the law and when you find out and read why, there isn't an ability here to coerce that test out of you. You still have some fundamental rights, even, a, even as a as an occupied people, even under civil rights. So this is a pain and a punishment and a penalty, isn't it? And it's in commerce, remember? And they got you to do that, too. So likely if you're drinking too much alcohol and driving and not quite got that worked out, you don't care about what I'm saying behind the woodshed and how not to avoid, how to avoid all that anyway. But at uh, any rate, the point is, is that what got me on this report was how long it was you got these uh, these laws that you think you would think a judge at the Supreme Court would look down at every legislation that comes through and actually do a very quick analysis of whether that any of these laws could be uh, could be uh, well facially in uh, unconstitutional and strike them right there coming out of the gate. You'd think that that they would work this way. It's supposed to work this way because there's inherent powers in these uh, these departments that we're supposed to have. Uh, separate and independent, and to be jealous of each other's uh, power, and to be jealous of an extension of a power. Now, this is supposed to this this is how this is all supposed to work. But no, it comes years later. They impose a look at all the people that were forced to do breathalyzer and penalties. But that's now shown, in, at least in Kansas, Toto, that that's not good enough, unconstitutional. You need to read the story. You need to find out how it works out. You need to maybe advance this kind of a thing in your locale. And to me, it's uh, beyond the use of, of, of alcohol. It's whether it's show, sh- trying to show, and, and the policy is a police policy here, and state police and the local police, they are going to be resistant to this. They'll be resistant to a lot of this. But th- there has to be written into the policy these, these laws as well. Maybe you can step up and cause that to happen all over the country using these states' uh, decisions uh, as an equal footing authority uh, for or, or even under recip- reciprocity, you just move them through and make them additions to the local policy so that uh, we start to get a better understanding of, even though it says as you, are, you have implied consent, it doesn't extend quite that far. Again, there's a lot to say here, but I, but I, I won't. Another thing, that a Supre- the Supreme Court of the United States did, the federal one, uh, very interesting, against this military encroachment to try and, again, uh, I guess I don't say it much, I say it a little bit here, you know the Deweys and the commercial commerce. That's uh, that's all sits in that other also in an admiral author, admiralty authority as well. Where that's where they have the seizure power. And that's where we move over to here, to this uh, act, not a state supreme court, but the federal supreme court now has broached this thing, which should have never been this far. Many many years asset forfeiture for things. They've actually now ruled on the fact, and where they the law said the, the statute said that they have the right to seize things. Remember, even as a occupied people, as a freed slave, uh, giving given rights under civil rights, where you shall pay taxes, there is a limit. There's a limited form of government out there, and the limit is written in the in the constitutions and or the statutes that are uh, lawful to that. The guidance, and so I have a though I don't I don't know that many people have said it. This little Supreme Court rules the Constitution limits police asset forfeiture, I think is going to have a different ramification. But let's look at this. For all of you all that have had your stuff stolen by the government, uh, they, in a nutshell, the Supreme Court came back and said, yeah, even those of you, and they actually referenced the Civil War doctrine about this for the freed people that were imposed by states without when they were, when they were supposedly freed and not subject why the uh, why the government federal government came in to protect y'all and look very carefully at title 42 section 1981 uh, that the rights of those that were freed were those of the white citizen that was also under this extortion 
So no one's equal. The only equality is that you have equality of imposition. That even under the right for the punishments and pains and taxes and all that other nonsense you see at 42 U.S.C. 1981 that you think is that Martin Luther, you think Martin Luther King was talking about, which he was, but in the obligation of, of your character, you don't even know what all that meant. But right there, there's even a limit. I told you this through the Libra Code as well. There's a limit. Whether or not you enjoy it's a whole different thing, but there is a limit because there's a wiser minds in history have said, you know, we can't deplete everybody down to nothing or they die. And it's better to deplete them down a bit and then we, they keep going and we can keep using them. And that's what you see, uh, I think the government now has perfected in a way. You see that at Roe versus Wade. We can even use you when we abort you. And so, getting back to this, Supreme Court rules the Constitution limits, uh, limits police asset forfeiture. The bottom line on this seems to be, when a state makes a rule of what the fine and penalty is, because this is a, a country of notice, a notice, opportunity, time, and place. That's due process. When you're given a notice of what the, a violation is, that's what you're held to that. You're presumed to know it. Ignorance of it is no excuse. But now the Supreme Court's reminding everybody, in this case, if I get this right, this is, I guess, I'll say paraphrase to the point, is they're saying when you write down as a state, or a, country, or a government, you write down there's a, a notice of a violation and a penalty for that. You're stuck to that. You're stuck to the value, and you're stuck to the time. Crime would be giving time. Back of administration or civil would be only money. You're stuck to that. And so you can't come in on a $10,000 fine for doing a drug thing, and you even get conviction, which this case is on a guy admitted he was doing doing some violation, which the fine was somewhere around maybe 10000 I don't remember all the numbers. It's irrelevant to the point. The fact is there was a number, and they came in and took his $40,000 SUV to pay that. The Supreme Court said that was excessive. It was unreasonable and inaccessible. So you've got a couple of standards to look at here. Now, why that had to go to the court, I don't know, because it all says reasonable, and it all says it's supposed to be within the notice, and yet these governments, because here's the point, all your states' rights people is for sure. Your states' rights people, this is what government does. You think you want to give the power to the state? Are you kidding me? This is what they do. They'll steal you blind and not care about it. They don't care. This is what government does universally. Now, the government was supposed to be you, so where have you been? But getting back to the Supreme Court ruling, that there's limits, folks. And I'm going to suggest to you the limits are what's in the law, the notice they gave to you on the reasonable fine and punishment for a particular offense, whether civil or, or penal, whether it's criminal. And this case says you can't take more than you said the statutes say that the penalty is or have given notice the statute was because what you're looking at is a bunch of people that are weighing the risks and the penalty against the crime they're doing. Presumed that you're doing crime. That's what you're weighing the risks for. And so there is a limit to this. And you have been suggesting that you need to learn what those are and present those in the records as you can. In other words, for me, I've been seeing this before. Now that I understand if they want to pull me in and make, make it tough on me, which I try not to get involved at all because i got other more important things to do than deal with the government that's corrupt in their, in their courts and trying to show how the... Uh, how I can enjoin them, and then they won't answer. It's all nonsense work, work to me. But there's a thing of the sentence. If I know now they're going to be able to take a, and this is a, actually a, a, a defense against this taking of the property, which no one does, that you move independent collaterally in equity, and you say, listen, your penalties stole, you stole value. This is what I understand why that no one people, more people don't do this, why it probably takes so long. You stole way more value than you gave me notice would be the penalty for what you claim I'm, I, you think I've done. And what do you do? You got two points then. That's also going to go toward the sentence. And that's where you get to your right of allocution, doesn't it? That's where you have another word in your mouth. Well, the sentence that you're going to render to me is more and beyond already because you've already stolen my property and didn't give it back to me in timely fashion. Does anybody say this stuff? It's all there to say. But see, they work on your ignorance and your failure to assert your rights. So you have to know them before you get going. It, ain't that, it isn't because you know the Constitution and what ought to happen. The Supreme Court rules the constitutional limits on police asset forfeiture. Big case. This is monstrous, folks. Monstrous. Huge. Y-U-G-E. Now, it's not universal yet, and it won't. It, it, there's a bunch of stuff that happened here. 
you still now have to now you have a fortification and a Supreme Court decision to say what was what, what was reasonable, what was not excessive. So that's still the question handed to the government, isn't it? And so I ask you to consider your equity remedies to show they have to show you that it's not excessive where the notice that they put in the statutes was it hasn't been exceeded when they when they keep one thin dime more than what they needed to and in, in, in some cases it's not evidence that's the other thing they do they hide it all in their evidence as well if you haven't if you haven't seen that at any rate it, valuable valuable statement i don't even know why it has to go this far proof that the governments the state governments will thieve from you for all you states rights people think the states rights is where you want to go this is just government that has uh, always needed constraints. The best attempt that men and women have done, well, men in this case, was the United States uh, government uh, and the states, the way they set it up. That was the best attempt that we've had so far. And it certainly fell a whole lot short as we see uh, what has happened over the last few hundred years. That's where we come in again. But, so those of you that see this asset forfeiture, there's still going to be some discussion, but I think now equity steps in to show very clearly based on this authority you don't have to go through their decision based on a lawsuit suing the property. You come in and, and do equity collateral attack saying they don't have the right to sue above the notice. And if I never did anything, you didn't have the right to take that. I'm not saying you go through their system. I'm saying you invoke your rights through your remedy, not their remedy. Totally different thought, different nuance than I ever hear maybe people speaking. I don't even know that I don't really analyze it about being a difference. I just know looking at what's supposed to happen, people aren't doing that. And when they start to do this, we have a real, the system recognizes the problem. And the next problem we have is that the system is corrupt enough that it's never had enough of us saying much to out the whole thing for it not being there to help you anyway. And what is that? One even more step. We have to fix that. That we keep the invader, this, the, the group, the privateers that secreted themselves into this country called the Bar Association and others? Or do we toss them out like miners used to do? Well, maybe those guys had a good idea. They're all as ignorant and dumb as they was. Maybe they knew something we don't anymore. How dumb is we? So we were talking, I was talking just moments ago about the regulation they beat you down the homeless they, when it's legal if something's legalized it's now it creates more problems we're talking about the problem of legalization i talked to you I, it's all i try to expose to you that legalization is just civil panel it's a civil liability it's actually a conviction in the civil side and you'll be regulated it's a crime that they're allowing so they have to regulate it we're back to what happens on that we see it very clearly now in maine maine signs a deal for seed to sale marijuana tracking system now the voters voted uh, I, I never read the, the, the rule but they voted to legalize marijuana so the state takes it and says we're going to go seed to sale tracking system and guess what we're going to contract with a Florida company public private partnership to keep track of y'all from seed to sale that includes your medical marijuana folks think about how this insidiousness works no, you couldn't just decri just stop criminalizing it. You couldn't stop making it a crime at all. No, you legalized it. And now you're going to see how this stuff starts to work, and I'm, I'll be surprised if this doesn't start to move along uh, pretty heft uh, pretty handily. The state agreed to a three-year, $150,000 contract Tuesday with a Florida base. This is in Maine, contracting with a Florida-based technology company that, that will track and trace medical and adult-use marijuana products once regulations approved are approved for them. This is a condition in commerce. You don't have your recreational is considered in commerce and not not commerce. And this is what I've been telling you folks. They're taking like cap and trade. Every one of you is a criminal, and it doesn't matter that this stuff is. There's things that this cap and trade, like taxation through credit, can't touch, like your landed rights, like your granted rights. They can't touch any of that. But they're making all of it a criminal thing. The same thing here. When you legalize it in Maine, now Maine's go ahead. Your state's rights is taking it over and going to make a cloud-based company in another state to keep track of you all. Now, so here we have, I told you before, about big data. And you're going to have to be careful about the public-private partnerships and the private partnerships having the big data that is also susceptible to its vulnerabilities, isn't it? 
notwithstanding the fact that they're tracking it. And remember, we don't have to have a suspicion. And remember, the states are willing to, like, even though they never had the power to, they, they want to use a, a test. They want to give you, extract from you your right to not consent again, not to testify against yourself, and get those tests. They're willing to use this information in, unconstitutionally. When it starts to go to systems like this, you have a hard time showing that what you are doing is a harm to you because it's this is civil side. This is another nuance of the problem that people I, I know do not appreciate whatsoever. And the only way I've been able to see to attack this is that there's just some things that are not in commerce reg and regulable, and this plant is one of them. Your property rights is one of them. Your right, to, the appurtenant rights to go do get to places with this is another. And as long as you all stay crickets, this kind of nonsense. I couldn't even believe I was reading tracking seed to sale. They track the seeds, folks. The sale almost seems like, oh, that's like almost, that's already been the crime they've been repeating over and over. They've been tracking you on the sale all ever since, but right down to the seed. That's how insidious this is all, uh, is all that you all agree to legalization or be crickets on the fact of it. And I told you the, the group normal, a long time ago, maybe there was, uh, you know, free the weed, but no, they agree. It's like the NRA. They agree to a little bit of regulation, and you don't even know what happens as soon as you attach that. You you convert what it might have been an appurtenant right to a land issue and a right you have to go get the natural medicine to something that's in commerce. And I say it that way because I don't know where else to tell you all. We, if you can't get what I'm saying about that and make and cleave the authority from there, you're not going to even be able to do it on the commerce side which is really just an extension of your property rights. But, see, people don't have the property rights in them, so they probably, well, they don't have them. And they may be themselves property, as we saw Title 42, Section 1981, tell us. And because we became a problem, when we couldn't defend ourselves, the government came in to help us, and it's going to exact from us the payment, the tithe, for, for helping us. Equal to the white citizens, it says in that passage. So the white citizen's not free of this. Never has been. That's why the whole, these, these divisions are nuts. I mean, I just don't even get why people even engage, even con con consider it. But it, it shows a mental instability, at least in the, in the country and the people of the country. So we want to go ahead and legalize things. The government legalizes all kinds of stuff. We can see the reasons behind it. I don't know why you want to track seed to sale, but you know there's going to be big, big money behind all that to the state. That's what that bottom line is. And control. Now, you're going to be tracked from seed. For all you medical uh, cannabis growers and users, you're going to be tracked from the seed you use back to where you smoke it. That's going to make a digital database in Florida for those of you in Maine. And this is probably going to spread across the country. And uh, now you've got a database that people and government can look into. It's the government's database. Cops can look into it. Anybody who wants to cause trouble or be have nothing better to do but twiddle their thumbs and decides to want to go kick in your door has the ability to now go question. See, when you got it imposed and they think that they didn't see a piece of paper, they get to kick your door in to go look for it, even though you may have sent it or it wasn't an error. Well, that, that when that happens, then per, someone's probably unlikely going to die anymore. See, the military doesn't care. They don't need. They don't need no reasonable. It's just cause, not just cause. Now, that's the other thing on this uh, this uh, asset forfeiture. Don't they? Aren't they? Isn't isn't your rights an asset? They're forfeit, forfeiting when they start diminishing all this stuff against us. Does anybody talk about it in this way? Even fly court cases as test cases like they used to do. Te fly your own test case. Wouldn't that be interesting? We started doing that. You don't do something stupid and frivolous. You know, you look right at right at the problems that you see policies in violation of. Like we're doing here on the right now in the meetings that they're having to inform the legislature on this cap and trade cre tax credit. In other words, you're presumed a criminal. You don't get credit unless you're paying a tax. You don't get that credit, right? You ever see how that works? For all you outlaws, no, the ones outside of the law, the legal, 
the ones out there that aren't supposed to be touched. No, even you got the umbrella, the shadow on you. We go in and we tell them, no, 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 you get this whole thing is wrong. You're violating your fidu fiduciary duty is being breached in all these places. Well, if that is attached to a right that they're violating, that's an actionable case. And we found out they don't like messing with this kind of stuff. So all of us that are not doing that, every one of us that doesn't do this, even flying test cases on good substantial points. In other words, if you a test case is not really, you're not writing or doing it as a test case. You're actually doing it as the thing it's supposed to be declared. You can kind of do it if you can consider this as a declaratory judgment. You have your rights declared against that imposition. You could defeat all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I don't understand why people don't think this way, but they, they'd rather not make excuses or talk about climate. You know, we can argue climate change. That's fine. But when you get into the process like cap-and-trade legislation, it, climate change is irrelevant. It's only the impetus to bring it forward. You better have another word, another style of word in your mouth on how it's violating you. And we know already, if, it, if I don't know why people don't get into this for this point again. You want to be a winner? Just jump into one of these uh, uh, green religion cases, and they tell you they don't come by any constitution, ordinance, law, uh, statute, whatever. They come lawless to this whole thing. If you didn't think this was, this was like shooting fish in a barrel, they have no basis in law. You just have to bring the law and remind them of reality. That always helps, too. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know why people don't get more involved in this while they complain about how the how nasty it's become. And one of the main things is how nasty it becomes and legalization of things and how it's not really meant for you and how the system will protect themselves. Yet we have evidence of the harms that come about. And I say take this next story and you put it in a totally different area. Not really necessarily because it's all part of the global governance and pot potentially population control and, and productive unit control of the people uh, where they legalize uh, chemi chemicals to inject into you because they claim there's a harm that, that you're, you're the problem to if you don't get this. It's all worked on the same method, and we haven't figured it out. And, so we don't res and then we don't respond to it, or we respond to the wrong point. We go, uh, we talk about the stuff in a vaccine instead of looking at what the process was that was made all that imposition illegal. And we find out little break outbreaks that we can use to bring, bring open, you know, the science is settled. No, we can show you something here. Here's the next story we come up with. What government is willing to do against you, and yet the evidence to the contrary of what they claim is going on is right in front of us all the time. And we never pick that up and say, wait a minute, you're, you, you're a rat, you're an idiot. Well, okay, so you may have to do it in other words, but the point is that's the, the fundamental statement to them. That we hear this, L.A. countywide outbreak of whooping cough hits exclusive Harvard Westlake hard. And you read down in the story and you find out there wasn't, well, the way they, they kind of contorted the sentence, every one of the outbreaks of whooping cough were vaccinated. Were vaccinated against it, folks. Well, do you think that kind of says that maybe what we read behind the woodshed, the story back down in Australia, might be correct? That there was, you can sue to stop these injections to you, your little ones, your family, your neighborhood, what, your, your locale, your county, because there is no quality control? Do you think it also uh, picks up on that other uh, link I gave you a couple weeks ago that said when they studied, I, can't, I wish I could have had a mind to remember all these names, but when they studied the constituent park, parts of the GlaxoSmithKline vaccine, there was no antigen in it to stop this. There's no quality control. There was toxins in there, which may hasten the problem. You think you could just settle down and focus on this problem for those of you that are interested and pull these little bits of news, these notices to us, package them up in a nice statement and say, here, you government agent, you're killing us. You're harming us. You're not, you're breaching your fiduciary duty, and you're doing it under a conflict of interest on top of that. And just start pouring the coals to the train here. Can we do this for ourselves? How is it I can go through a week's worth of notices, the news that comes streaming through, and pick these things out? You can too. You can find a, a numerous subject matter areas. They all tie together. You just have to be of a mind to kind of see it go. It takes a little while, not long. It takes a week. I can pull this all together in a week, folks. 
it confirms stuff I've done in past weeks. And what am I saying? I'm saying I'm saying how to you grab this stuff up and how you become effective in the world again when we were supposed to. And the reason why it's so difficult is because this infiltration of this cancer, this metastasization of this what is it, socio psychopathic socio communo fascist, I don't even know what to call it. It's not even communitarianism, because communitarianism is like just a philosophy uh, relative to an individual's rights being less than the, and subordinate to the community. We're talking about something way much bigger. And you're watching it. And you're watching it destroy your, your life and your little ones and your future, the little their future. And yet the tools are here week by week. Any one of you to pick up and start to apply, learn how to apply, where to apply, and reopen, reopen the process. And it, this is a, a vigilance is eternal problem. So don't think it happens overnight. In fact, one of my colleagues, he's, I think it's been years. He's finally, people are starting to see the. Again, he was vilified for all the information he was bringing that we were bringing that he was he was supporting. He's now getting recognition that everything. Again, I've told you before, the way we do this, you don't have a, we do not have the luxury to be wrong once. That's a very high bar to set because he holds to that. He's now getting the reflection back by people who vilified him back in the past, acknowledging that what he presented was correct and that they now need to move down that track. This is years now, folks, so you're not doing it next week. But this is what it takes because we're so far down into the stinking abyss literally have to crawl ourselves back out now you don't get yourself in there you just identify that that's where everyone else is and it's again the nuances of how this works u.s government loses landmark vaccine lawsuit was something i told you before you tie it again to this la county whooping cough where they were all vaccinated and i think you start to see what government was willing to do against you and there's proof to show that they now sure that that was the case and to stop it and you, I don't know, I, my mind says, I, I, I hear people that are interested, but it falls on deaf minds, if you will. Now, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate someone sending me an email. I'd like to get involved, but I'm not quite sure I have all this stuff I want to do. Great, let's reduce it down to something you can get done right now, and we'll move on, and we'll, we'll throw more stuff in your backpack as we get going. And you will get going. And it's going to be maybe even a lonely, hard thing, but when you're not making a mistake once, ever, and you're on point of a particular problem, you will prevail. You will prevail. Or you'll okay, or you'll prove that you live in an insane world, and I wonder where we are in that point. Where are we in that point? Because what this happens to come down to because of this militarization of our lives, always now, folks, I just can't help but keep going back. They even reference it. They reference the standard of reasonableness to the Civil War. I, you know, I almost can't believe I read some of this stuff coming right out of their mouth of the Supreme Court. They're telling you where the source of this uh, this balance is. They're saying you can suffer civil rights, but yeah, there's a limit. And I'm telling you, in addition, the limit is where it's noticed to us in these statutes and codes, the objective basis so that they don't come and run us down. There is still the balance. But when there's not so much of a balance and they're willing to lie and they're willing to take excessive measures or you don't even understand they got a, another plan in the background, a dastardly deed they're moving through like I have found in this next story. They're willing to say that you have to get these vaccines. They're willing to, now you see they don't even work. You now see that you get the vaccine, you get the whoop and cough. If we didn't have many more conditions that we could find left and right, if the vaccine court doesn't tell you that they're willing to make harm, and that's okay because it's about risk management. A lot of it's about the risk, about you finding out, but notwithstanding the action that they're going to take, it's a risk against the profit, a risk against the control that they will then hit you on the other side of it when you try to make a decision and it doesn't meet their standard. The standard we now find out can be excessive by the Supreme Court issue relative to asset forfeiture. All these years they've been, the state was wrong, wrong, wrong. 
the DUI is wrong, wrong, wrong. Even though it says there's implied consent, it doesn't extend to giving up your rights underneath the Constitution. And you start to understand how powerful it was that they did write the Bill of Rights. Because the government, if it wasn't there, they'd be running us down. That's what government, that's what people and psychopaths in power do to people in the world. Was there better answers? Well, I suppose there could have been because you see we're back to the problem. We didn't solve it yet. But notwithstanding that, you keep thinking that you're doing no wrong. You keep thinking you're going to their licensees for decisions and they think that you think they're giving you license to make a decision. Here's a story about what the government will do, even though what they produce doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It, to the advantage of the, of the system at all, they use the military enforcers now to do this. A family raided by cops, their children kidnapped for not bringing son to an ER for a fever. Now, there's a little tale about the height of the fever. They're all getting into the number. Uh, they said, well, it was only 104. She went to a doctor. The doctor said, well, if it isn't any other symptoms, then it's just okay. You might consider taking it to the ER, but it's no problem because there's no other symptoms. So the parents didn't go to the ER. The doctor, who's the licensee of the state, calls. And I have, when I started seeing this, I'm thinking, uh-oh. This is what I ran across in 2000 to 2005 of the systemic abduction of children. This started to have earmarks of that. That the, the, the doctor calls the child services, like adult services, on the street corner, folks. Child services, and the SWAT team comes and takes them down, steals their kids away. When they get there, they find out they really have a, anybody who's had kids, they had a household of sick kids. And so they blame the parents on not going to the ER, even though at the time the baby that was in her arms sleeping now had only a temperature of 100, as we all know fevers break, and the other two had congestion. They were all found to be involved in child abuse. And they thought they were doing it right. For those of you that think you're doing nothing wrong, for those of you that think you're free to make decisions. Now you're, if, if I can put it this, it's everything's done to a monetary value. Do you think your sons and daughters are an asset of value to you? Well, those of you that are experiencing this problem, maybe consider that you can put this against what they did because they don't have their kids back yet, their little goats. They now are underneath the scrutiny of the state on a fabricated thing that a licensee told them was okay for them to decide, and yet reneged. I mean, my mind just goes through, okay, here, we maybe no justice ultimately because it's already filed, but failed, but you know what kind of a bunch of lawsuits would start making notice to people here? I wish people knew how to, simple it is to cause this to happen for them. They could make a big issue about this. My concern became, though, what I researched back in 2000, 2005, and I keep telling you, I think, I'm, uh, I, think I escaped. I'm lucky they only destroyed my documentary, because the next step would be to come after me. And if somehow they figured out when they did that and they destroyed my life at that time, they didn't need to destroy me. And it's essentially worked out that way. That there's a system inside the system. I keep telling you, why don't you see more cops and judges and prosecutors and every and, and uh, child services and foster homes, more importantly, involved in pedophilia? You think that's a perfect system? I can tell you it's not. In fact, I can tell you that the, when you see a, a missing child in that system or a runaway, that's a euphemism. And then we're now seeing all these years later, I've been sh I've been shown correct in my observations back then. I wasn't the one. This has been happening forever. If you talk about, just look at the Catholic Church, folks. This is not something new. I just happened to run into some facts that caused my attention to be focused on something, and I identified this problem inside the system. That when I read this story, for these reasons, I am highly suspect of the doctor, the cops, the C the CH uh, the the child services and the judge that would be involved in allowing all this nonsense, and then we find out. 
uh, as it's finally coming to the to to bear. Remember, I told you about Sandusky. I've told you about the judges there. I told you it was bigger than that when I found out the university was involved and they have roots back over to England. I've told you about how that was going to expand into England. Then you saw Savile step up. Then you saw this so-called Pizzagate. I wonder how much of this is cover for the systemic problem. You never heard anybody official getting taken down, and yet we get this little report here right even before the system is actually got everything going on. Study finds that nearly half of the children, uh, child and adult sex trafficking victims were abused by the police itself. I was not, I mean, how, am I supposed to say, uh, what should I say, oh, no, duh? It's systemic, this thing. Okay, no different than it's systemic in the church. These are systemic governmental problems. These are people with power that exercise the power wrongly, that are not accountable. I find it's kind of fascinating how these stories come forward. They're here. It's almost like a cryptic explanation of what's going on if you have the eyes to see it. The whole problem is then do we have people that can address it? Oh, they'll deny it to the hilt. I've told you this for years, though. Why do you hear about a breakdown? I mean, some kind of arrest, 300 arrests of so-called pedophilia, and you see the movie, the TV comes on and says, oh, we're going to set this stupid idiot up for uh, child pornography and going to go meet this young girl. We set him up, we make a big deal of, of the TV. Why don't you hear anybody in the system caught up in this? And then you find a study that says, study finds that half of the child and adult sex trafficking victims were abused by police. And then I hear the story before, the families raided by the cops and stole their children. But it was instituted by a doctor, if you think you're safe from the doctor. And they get to do this because there's a legal system that allows it. How did I identify that judge back in 2000 or so? There was a decision that he made relevant to, uh, that there was in that one case I saw, relevant to evidence that made no sense in law. And then I analyzed, why would the judge want to keep that? Because they do this all the time, so you shouldn't think about well, withholding evidence or not allowing it evidence or something. It was the type of evidence and what it was to speak to that was not wanted to be made record of. And then I looked at what was that going to expose. And that started my trail. And what I found out in studying this thing was this stuff, this abuse, is systemic. These systems were set up in the system, and underneath the banner, let's say, of child rights, they give you all the labels of how good it is to establish and continue these things within the system unseen. I guess let me go back to that story about the family being having their, their son and daughter. I told you this before. If you're someone where uh, child services takes your, your son or daughter, you have to be there in their face wanting to see your son or daughter always. Don't let them slip back into the system. Don't let them get put or They're not going to tell you where the son, son and daughter is, but you make sure you have court cases that you invent to show up that they have to be produced before you. You may never get the connection back for a long time because they have this thing all set up, but they're waiting for someone to not pay attention and the child gets put back and doesn't need to come out for months on end. Is one way to counter this problem. Now, these folks that got their kids taken over a fever that didn't exist, and folks, I, I had to laugh about the temperature. Yeah, they're serious when you get up to 104, 105. They get real serious, but I'm somebody who somehow who survives like 108. In fact, I took my temperature one time. I was really sick. It was the time I almost died, and it, it, the, the mercury was at the, yes, it was mercury. Mercury was at the end of the thermometer because I only think they go to 108. Yeah, I did some damage, but the point is, is you, t your body is pretty miraculous. It can do some stuff. It could try and take out the beast he's taking you out. In this case, the for me, it was really, really serious. It was going to kill me. That's what the story I told you about antibiotics. So 105 is you got to really be careful, but there has to be symptoms. So there was nothing here, yet the doctor calls CHC uh, Child Services. To me, that was earmarks for a systemic well, you see it. I mean, it's in the cops, too. They're all willing to go violate the law because they're getting something. Maybe this uh, Supreme Court decision for when you turn your sons and daughters to your assets, to tax them as property, and you start addressing this as a little bit better, maybe that was too much to take.
based on that thing. And then you have an alternative remedy that's not within the one they're going to hand you to try and keep your your kids stolen. So what again, some of the theme here is what government does and justifies underneath the color of authority, color authority uh, based on some whatever legalization that they try and do. Remember I've talked to you about Roe versus Wade. It looked like it was because of the technology, it was a balance between when they could take, when they were gonna, able to take a, a, a unit in the future, production unit in the future versus threatening the production unit they had in the mom in this commerce world that we fought, cage and prison we find ourselves in. Remember, your votes are based in taxes. Okay? So don't like think that all your voters out there, registered people, uh, aren't t tied into this as well. That's what your franchise is connected to. Remember, it's all legal entity commerce stuff. Everybody think about this stuff. I talk about it as you think about it. But the government will give license to do bad things, and it has its reasons whether you understand it or not. In fact, when this Roe versus Wade went to went to Ruth Bader Ginsburg that made the decision that you heard about the asset forfeiture, she thought this was a population control method, the Roe versus Wade decision would be. In the background, that's what she thought. That's what the legislation was supposed to do. And we get back over to, I just said what I what I viewed when I did my review of this about the production unit protection, the risk management between the production unit to, of the future to the one they had in possession, the system had in possession of the mother. And then Clint Richardson came and did the research based on some things I was explaining to him, and he did his analysis, and he found out uh, that this actually also instituted an industry of parts as parts, baby parts, fetal parts. And here we have admission that there's a, that condition going on in the news and the notice today. Owners of company of a company, in other words, the government will do this to you. They, they have a different, they, those psychopaths in the government have a different view than you might consider, and they want you to have your view. They don't want you to catch on to this view. Owners of company that bought aborted baby parts from Planned Parenthood are arrested. I won't read more of the story than that title tells me everything. You it doesn't say that Planned Parenthood was arrested, does it? It doesn't play say that they were closed down. No. It says that they were buying aborted baby parts, and it says that they did it illegally. What's the other side of illegal? It was there's a, The illegality being existent means the legality is existent. This little story right here wasn't about the uh, the arrest and uh, of of some people that were buying body parts from Planned Parenthood. That body Planned Parenthood is selling body parts, just as I told you just last week. I can't even get this out of my mouth fast enough anymore, folks. This is Clint Richardson found. This is a an industry that they're fueling. And I told you that that New York stud, that New York, you know, again, it's, it's a Acacia or whatever her name is, or the green. The green jobs, which is the cap and trade issue, the green jobs bill they're going through. No, no, these, it's all coming out of New York. This is where you find another center of, 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 of evil. Uh, New York is promoting, or where's, where's the UN too? But ev it's, this is an evil coming out of this area. They want to do this. Why? Because it, it's a way to control populations. It's a way to make industry. It's a way to make profit. It's a way to make, uh, well, they, they take it on the secondhand leverage funding side and or taxation principle side. It's not obvious, but uh, they they take out uh, the aborted baby parts are the fact that Clint Richardson found that they are uh, an industry, and I was telling you that the thing out of New York was to get to get them they needed babies later in term, and technology is such that the the, the production unit of the mother is not put at risk for the production value they get from parts of the fetal fetus two minutes before it was supposed to be born. And then we get this story that says Planned Parenthood was selling these parts, and then the people bought illegally, which I'm telling you means they can be sold legally, and why Planned Parenthood, which is in the position created by Congress to do so, is in the parts is parts business. In fact, to the point that they're trying to take, and they do take the babies out, and they take them alive. Why? Because you can't harvest the organs and lift the a baby dies. If you don't think, talk about cannibalism. I I don't know, folks, but it parts is parts here. And then we hear this. Remember, we got body parts. I was just talking to you about how this is all working down. Now we're hearing it. Just comes right on out of the news. I'm like I said, I don't even know what to say. I'd shake my head. And we sit here and watch it. HHS out of the UK, out of the UK, yeah. HHS extends contract to make 
humanized mice with aborted baby parts for another 90 days. HHS extends contract to make humanized mice. What have I talked about about the rat and the programming and all this other stuff? What have I talked about the organoid brain and the uh, humanization of these things, the experimentation that they are getting late-term fetal parts? We now see they want to humanize mice. That's going to revert back to us eventually as they work it all out, folks. If you don't think that Planned Parenthood can legally sell parts as parts, and that's why they were made. It has nothing to do with really abortion. It has nothing to do with your opinion about it. They want you to argue that. This has to do with identifying that the government will make you a commodity, and has. What else? What Can I stop here now, folks? Do you get it? Do you get, get, get all fired up to go do something somewhere, even if you're not involved with abortion or that or whatever that is? Again, I, I don't know why people, they, they want you to get into the religious side of this. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with recognizing you, li your work, you live in a commercial prison. And there's people that are pulling the levers of that. I don't care how many curtains you pull back and think you're seeing that. You're not. We're starting to, we're starting, finally, all these years since Roe vs. Wade, we're seeing the truth. This is how it works. You think, this, you think they didn't know this could happen? No, no, they, they know exactly how this works out. They just have to come in a time when it's more acceptable, more acceptable. They keep throwing these seeds out and hope that they find fertile soil in your brain, which means your brain is a bunch of fertilizer for them. Think about how they treat that. The Department of Human uh, Health and Human Services says it has granted a second 90-day extension to a contract it has with the University of California at San Francisco to it requires UCSF to make humanized mice. These creatures are made by implanting mice with human tissues taken from late-term aborted babies. Didn't I just say this a couple weeks ago or even last week? Even as late as last week, folks. This is not sci-fi what they're doing. I keep having to hesitate. I don't want to get too predictive like, oh, I know what I see because I don't have a clue. I just see what they're doing. I see what the laws have said. I see they've been saying this forever. I started looking at what they call the laws in a different way than most people. They gave me a whole different insight. And I come to you almost uh, almost behind the scenes, uh, just like, just a week week ago, talking to you that they're using these, they need these late term aborted, and that's why you saw New York, and I hear crickets, or I'm going to hear a religious argument. This is your governments, well, the states and the federal, and the and the international governments agreeing that you're just a bunch of body parts if they deem it to be. Like, they have a say on that. So this government and its police, its military force, come thump on you when you think you have a decision, uh, come thump on you when you didn't do what they said you were supposed to do, that get your injections, destroy your family because you didn't get injections. You see how that works, too? You don't get your injection in California, they're going to say you child abuse. You deny her. Won't look one iota into the problem and the reality. Why? Because they're not the governments are not there for you, for you. Will not assert your rights against it, if you will, if I can say like an equity to focus you on something that's collateral to what they offer. But they gain the capacity to get more and more powerful to enforce what insanity they need. The future they want. They keep telling us this. A twenty thirty. Like I told you the the, the mass migration was right in A2030. Now the, the Syrians are going back into Syria. Why? Because they were uh, fraudulently exposed to dangers and fled. Because a people, some pe peoples generally don't have the right to defend themselves against su such superior forces. And so you'll run. Fight or flight is a reality. And there, that's being used. So... The police, superpower police force, the military around the world, even they call them police in your locale, maybe your local sheriff's deputies, they're going to need to hunt you down because you're such a criminal. Remember, you're presumptively a criminal. Under cap and trade, you're presumptively already needing to pay a punitive damage. They didn't ever look to see if they have the jurisdiction to do so or the trial or the conviction or even the right to do what they did. No, if you look at the authorities underneath that, it's over the earth. Now, how does a local government, how does the United States or a local a state within the United States have jurisdiction over the earth? Is the arrogance that we're dealing with. It's also pointing to the fact that the 
that, that this is a foreign imposition because those that are imposing it think they have governance power over the earth. And remember, since I pointed out it's a green religion, there's only going to be one religion. It's the unified, the universal church. And who's going to be the head of that? All this is pointing to one organization. But we want to have our military have superpowers. And what these mice brains and what they're doing with the fetal tissue, the late term aborted fetal tissues and saving the brains and making them mice mice powered, we now see this technology, nanoparticle injections give mice night vision superpower. You think they're experimenting with taking their soldiers and their military police, your police officers, giving them superpowers to seek you down? if they can't do it by drone? Do you think they're practicing on late-term fetal brains in order for, to make sure this is translating from mice to humans? Do I read? I can read more. It's coming out of China, too, where they're doing that other, evidence, that other thing. Nanotechnologists injected tiny particles into the eyes. Think of nanotechnology being sprayed in the environment, folks. Is this giving you something? Well, I don't know, but they have to, they have to put it particularly in the eye. But nanotechnology is an interesting technology. It's really visible to a lot of our body processes. But when they inject these nanoparticles in the eye of a mouse, which I assume they're going to do to the eye of a late-term fetal brain, and see if it can see things it couldn't see before, in this case, infrared at night, folks, you see heat, wouldn't that be a very powerful tool? You wouldn't even need goggles anymore military goggles to see people at night doing things when their police power, your military, can see with a simple injection of a nanoparticle in your eye. And you'll have the mice powers now. Where did they learn how to enhance this so you see other frequencies? Is a point in the people that are coming against you. It's kind of a sobering thought when you realize, again, it took years and years, decades, for a control to be stated in law that what the government was the state states are doing and the federal government does has a limit that they were not that they were in excess of can't tell you that you live in a society based in law because if it was the law first it wouldn't be the rule of law waiting to tell you decades later the disclosure for Roe versus Wade would have been out I wouldn't even have done my study and then be, had it um, um, uh, appended to by Clint Richardson's view of the of the what do you call the commercialization industry, which we see play out right now. And then they take this commercialization of the pro of the commerce parts of a productive unit, and they're going to make other productive enhance other productive units to enforce and empower that collection and revenue and control system. Utilizing the fetal tissue and parts of di of people, I, I don't even know. I don't even want to get inside that other argument. And if you think that they're not wanting to track us all down, it's all in the news. I'll just read another one: Police in Canada are tracking people's negative behavior in a risk database. So the the family that got invaded, it was apparently they didn't weren't told this, but it was a negative behavior that they didn't take their their son to the ER. Even though the doctor, the licensee of the state, said it was okay to make the decision whether to or not. But someone else looked in and decided they were wrong, right? So Canada, we're getting the news that they're, uh, they're tracking behavior. Well, a behavioral control, behavior modification, behavioral data seeking, first of all, before the analysis and then the control, is all part of this global governance condition. They want to know if you're going to behave correctly. And you're seeing that out of China. This is all just an integration. It's already global, folks. And you don't, for those of you who think you're not doing anything wrong, you're presumptively guilty if you're not already convicted to punitive damage. We talk in the point of cap and trade of punitive. They tell you it's punitive. Go look it up what that means. And ask yourself, did you get a trial? Did, did the concept, was it put on trial? No, these people are don't care about any controls. It's punitive. You're already going to pay. And I told you you've been determined to be an enemy combatant in this whole thing. So you've lost everything and you didn't say anything. Why well, I went to crickets. 
did I fail, folks, up front? Did I was I did my storytelling just not interest enough people to get involved? Will history even care? And I'm going to tell you it's not if we we allow the crickets to prevail. But they're they're looking at negative behavior. You don't even know what the standard was on that. That's in the news. These people are going to come through and they'll be making their decisions based on what they think and you won't have an idea at it. And you can't get at it the way they're setting it up. But we heard about all that suspicionless nonsense. It's all investigative and that means it's not subject to FOIA. It's not subject to scrutiny. It's not subject to anything because it's still in the decision-making capacity and the courts will not enter in to stop it. Not even an equity condition will help you. And these people know to do this. This is the other part. But people look very carefully at how to subvert this. And no one is uh, paying attention to stop it. Because what it takes now, as I've been telling you, is uh, some initiative to get laws on the books, policy changes, that now check every one of these things that they're taking license that we see years and years later. We have to wait years and years if we don't do this, that it was wrong anyway. My, my, my main main problem for the mining law, miners being imposed when there's no law to support it, and yet we're forced, like it's a win, we go through the court case and get get something fixed, but the courts say it was improperly imposed. Did, did we really win? No, they were never supposed to impose us in the first place. We weren't supposed to take our time away from what we were granted to do. That's a takings. Do they get credit for it? No, because we're not in a law condition. And as long as people don't see that, they're going to make all the wrong decisions and think they're all thinking the right stuff. And yet they won't, you know, it's like an insanity. You keep doing the wrong thing, same thing, same thing, different. You think you're changing a little bit, but it's all within the same review underneath the occupation. They could care less because they're doing something else and they're keeping track of everything that you do. And they've got the seat of decision and power to do it, to, to enforce it. Police are tracking Canada negative behavior. Risk database. You think that database will be eventually joined as the Commerce Department? The uh, oh darn it, I the name just slipped from my mind. It's it's in every locale. I can't remember now. The name just slipped from my mind. It's a Commerce something association in every city. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna be probably trying to get together this U.S. U.S. Uh, US uh, MCA or something that just went through for Canada. United States and Mexico, they're going to use that to try and regionalize the whole of the three nations and try and combine it together under a commerce connection. They're going to be the probably the adherent for that. That you think that Florida's database for the main seed company of marijuana is not going to be tied to something Canada and federal where they're looking at behavior? On the legalization, remember track and trace of everything in Maine? Attached to everything you do? And then you think in China? And you think about social credit, folks. You think about the legislation already been seeded out there that if you're on a marijuana or any other thing they don't think that you're correctly doing, you lose your rights like to have a gun. You, you think this is not pulling together? Is it not pulling together fast enough yet that you can't see it? That's another interesting problem. You should be able to see it by now. Congress advances gun registry via universal background checks. I, I can't even believe I'm reading this stuff, folks. You think you want the enemy that's proving itself to be an enemy to know where you live when you have a right to bear arms for the purpose of defending yourself against that excess that we know has no constraint until at best, at best, 10 or 20 years, 30, 40 years later. Thank you, uh, Vinny. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. That's right. I couldn't. It just did not come to my mind. The word chamber just went. Anyway, chamber of Commerce. Your local Chamber of Commerce is... They'll sound good, and they're doing, it's interesting, they're trying to change their spots just a little bit. They do want better commerce, but you, it's going to be attached to a, 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 a governance thing. It's always has been. You're going to watch them want to regionalize three nations uh, for the purpose of glo central governance over the na North America. Uh, this is all bringing the agenda in uh, eventually. It's slow motion, folks. Most people don't see this. Under the guise of mandating universal background checks, Congress is working on a gun control plot that would ban all private assets, private sales, excuse me, private sales. Well, i got the other story in my mind, don't I? Uh, private sales of firearms and essentially create a national gun registry. I think the Second Amendment would condemn that. But you see they're going to push it through until someone says it. Again, well, how does the, how does the Second Amendment condemn that? It's my opinion here. But if I have the right to fight a bare arm to keep myself free of an oppressive government, it does not have the right to know about me. 
That's my appurtenant right. And it doesn't have a right of control over any of that. Even though the Supreme Court, which is not independent of that government, will tell you different. And this is now where the rubber meets the road, whether you're going to really assert your rights or you're not. Are you going to band up enough in lots of places? Not because the NRA says, not because you somebody that says, oh, there's a Second Amendment and that's it, that's all there is. You're going to understand the, the condition of the battlefield you're in and that you're going to come at this a little differently. Universal background check, Congress is working on gun control. You think that's going to make it into one of your universal dossier that's going across in the real ID that eventually is going to tie into places with these database companies like in Florida for tracking the seeds of cannabis from seed to sale? I can't even believe That just makes, I mean, I don't even know what to think about that. A plant, folks. That was supposed to be nothing? You think legalization meant nothing? You think legalization's helping you? Who thinks that? That'll be the people that you find out that you live with. That is the problem with this country. No, but you can't point at them. You're saying, that's us because we all live together. Whatever has caused that division and that reality to fall from people is all of our problems. Because there's, a, in, there's, a, there's an entity, there's a, a, a force that's out there that's causing it, that needs to be ended. With virtually no Republican support, House Democrats rammed through the so-called Bipartisan Background Checks Act, or H.R. 8, on February 28th. It was not immediately clear what made the legislation bipartisan, as just eight GOP lawmakers, all of them left-wing Republicans in name only, rhinos, supported the measure while 188 voted against it. A handful of Democrats also voted against the bill. Against the whole, a gay activist hope the embarrassing collapse of the expected GOP support will ensure the bill dies before ever getting out of the U.S. Senate. And that might be, but remember, the U.S. Senate just showed us that it doesn't care to commit war crimes on the United States, the people of the United States, by sequestering away all their mineral grounds uh, so the miners can't get at it and not enforcing the timber industry uh, laws for harvesting timber, which in turn then aids and abets the fire problem that we have every year. So there's a pretty interesting dynamic that goes straight through all this stuff. It doesn't matter where I start, I can end up going through and telling you how it all interrelates. And it's because the same war criminals in, that we see in identified as political parties or the Bar Association are in control of your life, and you are just like crickets to them. You think it's such a pleasurable time. And you think this is all going to be separate, all these... Uh, Background check, you think there's not even a background check actually being made? I told you, the re real ID is your background checked eventually. That's a universally international thing that may be eventually tied. I think it will be tied to a some type of a dig cashless system, digital currency, whatever they want to call it. The ledger of your life. Boy, that brings up some thoughts, but we'll go there. Digital driver's license and smartphones will be searched by police. Will be searched by police. You can and what you say can and will be uh, used against you, folks. That's what this is about. And these little devices are testimony takers, and the cops will be able to search your license, your drive for your driver's license on the smartphones and the smartphones. Now, remember, we just said before that there's supposed to be a limit. Why isn't don't you see a limit here? Is uh, is another type of analysis that you've got to find out, and it starts to follow. We start to get closer to what the reality of what's going on is. The only thing will be is whether or not you participate. You choose or not. And there's no there's no middle ground here. You're either participating or you're not. And that doesn't mean it's over for you because you found out, I told you, the cap and trade gets everybody now. So you see how unlawful it is. It, it gets everybody whether it has the right to get, get you or not. You, and you have no remedy. That's another thing that's a real important point. You, you have no remedy. That, now, that's not that's not law at all, is it? You, you don't understand the tyranny you're already living under by when the political parties are agreeing to things like green jobs or wealth, green welfare, whatever the heck they want to call this stuff, cap and trade, whatever, whatever mechanism that they're bringing on you. Then they need registration. Why? Because they got to keep track of everything, right? If you're a punitive uh, agent... You need to be kept track of, folks. When you're an enemy combatant, you need to be kept track of. Why is this even a question anymore? After all these years, 
that I still talk about it and I still hear, hear crickets over it. For years, the push to replace physical driver's license with digital driver's license have relied on one thing, privacy. But all of the fake news the public has been fed about their privacy is about to come crashing down, literally. The Nevada bill, if passed, would allow police to search everyone's smartphones. Nevada bill AB 200 allows police to search the phones of everyone involved in a car crash. I won't read the bill. The point is that they have uh, stipulations, and they put upon you these obligations, and your your little cell phone there will be testifying against you, and they're going to have the right to steal it. Oh, it's legalized. Excuse me. Remember how that works? It's a legal legalized crime. Uh, okay, car crashes. All right. Well, they, what they want to do is they're claiming that they want to check to see if your phone was being used while you were uh, texting before the accident. Okay, maybe. But doesn't limit. They say it's supposed to limit, but you see the license. Listen, the cops just, you just heard a study. The cops are taking, willing to abuse children and adults because they can. In fact, at one state, they talked about had to make a law against it because the law wasn't there, and they, the cops took advantage of the fact there was no, wasn't a law, which proved to, I forgot to report that part, uh, that, which proved you have to make laws to stop these people that can be too smart and psychologically stable to be a cop, and the system that allows that. How much clearer does it have to be made, folks, before we actually step up and start doing these things that I'm suggesting? Okay, so the Nevada... Another Democratic stronghold but wants these phones to be what I've been telling you. They're, 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 they're witnesses against you. Now, I'm interested to wonder about the reciprocity uh, between states, how they can do that to out-of-staters. But notwithstanding, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're going to collect, take your stuff. They're going to be able to take your information, take everything off your phone. And, they're, and then they go about taking what we've been saying. They can have suspicionless investigations then, can't they? Another thing is you don't know who this so-called cop is, that you don't know whether or not he's one of the ones that's abusing children. He has your information. Do you understand how fallen we've become now? We have now checked, whether you think about this stuff or not, we have these vulnerabilities now built in, and there was never supposed to be this strife, and none of this turmoil in our life. We're supposed to be peace and settlement and working toward more peaceful. And you watch this lawlessness come in that we are crickets to, that makes us less peaceful, and we don't take that as a clue that we're not going in the right direction. Instead, we would choose and rather be quiet. Anyway, I, I look at this, I could read. I don't want to read. You read. If you're interested, you read. If you're not interested, I don't know what you're listening to me for, really. You don't have to read everything I'm talking about. Find something, folks, and engage where you think you can. You'll find out whether you're right or wrong right there, and you just adjust yourself. It's nothing definitive. It's it's an ongoing fluid battle, folks. It really is. Anyway, I, I keep reading the story, but it's not. There's nothing here to read. It's it's the same same nonsense that we keep agreeing to. The cops are in a position. The government's in a position. They 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 tell you that they're going to do do wrong. I don't even know where this this opinion came that said that there was a limit. It is a limit if we have law. There's an embarrassment factor. They have to put in some kind of constraint. There's a sentiment that has to be met. I don't even know why that's still there, but it is, and it may be the last little bit of thing we have to work with. And I'm asking you to work with it. Take, take this stuff I'm talking about. Find your own. You don't have to listen to me. Find something that doesn't quite work for you and start to work out how, it's going to make it, how you're going to make it better. It was up to us as a society of free people to do so anyway, so I don't know what the big big stink about that is. Massive database leak gives us NASA, massive database leak. We'll put it all together so you get it clear. Massive database leak gives us a window into China's digital surveillance state. Okay, the biggest, the most populous country in the world has a leak. Do you think the little company in Florida or the cops, the local cops, or your local whatever database that you have, do you think that if the biggest country in the world, the most populous country can't protect their data, do you think that you're safe anywhere? I keep telling you, look at them as a, look at these places around the world as the mirror that is your life here in the near future. Earlier this month, security researcher Victor Grevers Found a disclosed, uh, found and disclosed an exposed database live tracking the location of about 2.6 million residents in Xinjiang, China. 
offering a window into what a digital surveillance state looks like in the 21st century. Again, I'm just going to point out that is enough. The biggest states doing it, I've told you about China, I've told you about the pivot to China, it had nothing to do with the military, that was just a front. This has to do with bringing on this global governance by the methods developed by China. This leak exposes us to what they do with the data. You can go read it, how they control your behavior, how they will control your behavior because of what they can do with that information, however innocent you think you are, and the standards that they don't have to tell you, they are imposing in order to get you to do that behavior. And the things they're willing to do without your knowledge ahead of time to get you to conform for all of you all who think you're free. Uh, anyway, I mean, like I said, I, keep, I start reading these stories. I want to keep reading, but it's not important. If you don't think this is important, I'm wasting your time. My job anymore, I think, it seems, I'm just looking for something to trigger your mind and to get into action. If you're not interested, i got to move on. You know, I got only got certain things to sell you, you and I got to find the thing quickly that you're interested in, and beyond that, maybe any entertainment value as well. We have something to do, not something to think about, something to know. Well, yeah, we got things to do and know. I mean, things to think about and know, but we have to do with it. Knowledge without action is powerless. Limiting your digital footprint in a surveillance state was an article of somebody written who is a journalist living in this in China, who explains how, how um, demanding it is to live in a surveillance state. I, I'd ask you to read this just to inform yourself what this, where we're going, where, what it's like. And this isn't even as bad as it gets. This is the beginnings of it. What you end up having to consider about when you move about in, a country, in these countries that will have, really, just a bunch of idiots looking at data and things they make up and bored at that. In fact, I heard Putin talking to his, mili his, his yes, military, his police officers, stop daydreaming on the river and get to the real work you need to do. Well, they're going to go get to work all right. But when they get bored or they get caught because now they're in the surveillance system that looks at how many hours they put on projects, they might just make work. And the, you're going to become part of their work. And so it's going to be important, as I've been telling you, how to limit your access to the surveillance systems. Limiting your digital footprint in a surveillance state written from someone in China. He's an American uh, a journalist written in China. How do they even function when you're supposed to be registered? He talks about the cracks in the system. He talks about being very careful about those. But that those are there. He doesn't really talk more than what I've been telling you in a less strict manner about you have to know your battlefield and choose your pathway properly through it. You start there naked without a weapon. And you, then you need to, and you st but you still need to prevail in, in every moment. And I, I found that you can do that. It's pretty amazing that you can do that at all, but that you can. And you can actually cause some change. Whether or not it's in a full-blown surveillance state and we're starting to see the glimpse of how bad it is or not. You should get an appreciation of that. And there's some people that know why I don't make such a big presence in the world. And I've told you, nothing serious, nothing's been secret either. I've told you how those uh, those precautions have prevailed to actually protect. They were, they, were proper, they were proper insights and proper things that were done to keep some anonymity going. <laughs> Hopefully a lot, even though I do a broadcast all the time. And my voice prints out there and they can make me say anything that they want, can't they? And so I saw I have to just take that and, and move. You're gonna, I'm going to have to hope in the future if anything is going on uh, that you understand it's either me or it's not. And then you have to understand that I've got to hold out a couple things as well, and then that'll be a test then, won't it, whether or not those were step-back measures. Yeah? So we're already living in a surveillance state. We're already living in the surveillance, the self-censoring. We're already living in a place that's not free, and it's just going to be a matter of how long will it take for the crickets to realize that that's not that the forest isn't so quiet. Things aren't so content and cozy. And we got things to do. And how are they going to do it if they're going to be that way? And how are you going to limit yourself? And I keep telling you about all these devices, the Internet of Things. We were told about that by the military, weren't we? Uh, Apple's HomePod 2 and Google's Nest Guard take spying on your family to the next level. 
this is now admitting it's buying. I told you this is what they were going to do. This is what is happening. They just build this stuff into your systems, and you keep bringing it into your house. They're talking about actually adding cameras and microphones to these devices, and they are spying on you. Your house is one big surveillance spy center. So don't be surprised one day when they get to knock the SWAT teams there. They heard your kid crying. You talked about a snuffy nose. You talked about a temperature, and someone busts your door in and steals your kid. And your little goat. Anyway, so I mean, it's in the news. Apple uh, and Google, like I said, when they stopped being, uh, when they said "don't be evil," they took that away from their vernacular. I said, "Watch out! These people are real evil. That's all they were about." Th this is the brave new future, and I hope you're really brave because you're being real quick. It's ain't going to get there. And what's the problem here about as well when they when you're dealing with a bunch of people that'll beat down on you because your opinion isn't good enough, your behavior isn't quite right, how are they going to find out? Well, if okay, you got an Apple uh, device or you have a, um, a HomePod or a, a guard, a Nest Guard in your home and other things. They're going to be, oh, everything, it's amazing how small the electronics is. Everything will have eyes and ears and be connected to the. You know, it'll be 5G because you don't know how to stop that or work to stop that either. And maybe even through your smart uh, smart meter because you don't figure out how to do the administrative stop on that either. Because you all just think you know what, what ought to be and is good enough and don't understand the system and method of destruction. Uh, but uh, how are they going to do that? But you're speaking into these devices, and here's what happens if you uh, even if you remain silent, and someone recognizes it. Here's your cricketness on something else in some other way. 11-year-old gifted student arrested and jailed, and jailed, folks, after refusing to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. So you all that have TVs and got scrutiny going on, and someone says, oh, we're going to play, you want to watch football, and it says time to do the, 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 the Star Spangled Banner, and you don't want to sing your tune, or you sing the tune a little off key, you might have your door smashed in because your behavior ain't quite up to snuff. And you're arrested. You have your little ones. You might be stolen. You have your little ones stolen. In the land of the free, little boys can can and will be thrown in jail after refusing to recite the Pledge of Allegiance in school. Now a mother is speaking out after you know, this exact same scenario happened to her child, member, the ward of the state, who is in the gifted program of Leighton Child's uh, middle, uh, middle Academy at Lakeland, Florida. I don't know what more to say. If we go read the story, failed to, to they had their, he has his reasons. He says uh, he was a racist and what all he wanted to believe. He has free speech, but he couldn't. He doesn't have free silence, does he? No, he gets arrested in the first instance. Let me offer it to you. I want to remind you long, long time ago. I talked about where this is all eventually connected as well as many other things. You get all of this global governance together and you still focus in on one organization that's also doing what the cops are doing. That's where everyone gets their license to do whatever they want. It's uh, abominations to everybody. Uh, but remember now, the Pledge of Allegiance has a little phrase, and I can't find it again. I've been looking and looking. I can't find the original documentation that keyed me into this. You'll notice in 1954, the Knights of Columbus added the phrase, had Congress add the phrase, to God indivisible. I wanted to know why the heck they added that to the pledge in 1954. Well, when you go find out and you do the international document search somewhere out there, folks, and I'm, I'm, wait, I'm looking for it myself. Didn't know at the time I was studying I'd be keeping track of this. There's an entity called God Indivisible. There's an entity called God Indivisible. That's been added to the Pledge of Allegiance. So not only was it whatever this guy, this, this kid was talking about, he felt there's a religious reason why you can stop not re doing the pledge. But you know what? That silence against that's going to be arrestable offense here soon for those of you that think you live in a free country and you and that you think you're exercising rights and you think you have the right of freedom of speech you also have the right to freedom from association no no you don't you don't have the right to behave your way through anything you choose apparently because not see i you might see the story for what it says here in the way the the son the, the guy the kid the boy didn't agree with the doing the pledge and supporting the united states government and there's other reasons but Remember, the pledge itself is just a pledge, but it does say something. And there was an addition about that God indivisible. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking an organization, an entity. And I'm going to leave it like that. I want people to do some research. Because if you find that document where that's defined in an international treaty or some big agreement to, that what came down, I need, I'd need. i like to have you send it to me because I've been looking. I can't find it. And it's very important to identify 
this term, a God individual, you wouldn't think it mattered anything. You'd think it might be, uh, you might think it maybe religion, but it's not. It's, a, it's an entity. It's a title. Why'd they throw that in there? Why'd the Knights of Columbus do it? Go check that out. Fascinating what's out there for us to see. And they do that right in the text of our stuff. And when you go to stop doing that, they beat you down. And they're teaching this, this boy here not to, not to have a free thought. And the mother's only doing what? Only telling you. She has no power against this this nonsense. What else do I say? When you don't, when you're 11 years old, you're not even supposed to be culpable for that, let alone not doing something. How far wrong? Where do you actually live when this is going on? Your speech is being constrained. Your speech, your silence is being arrestable, is arrestable. Again, just look at it. You're not free. You're not innocent. You're not given the discussion time either. You want a dialogue to consensus? The consensus was already done. You're toast. It's over for you. And the mother of the son can only complain. Now, I would say that there's other things, but I'm not going to get too deep that. My point is on the surface and where everybody deals with this is that you're watching your sons and daughters being religiositized into, is that a word? I don't think so. At any rate, it's, you're, you're looking at a religion that becomes universal church. It's coming through the green religion, through this carbon tax and stuff. All this, thing, you don't think it is. Sustainable development. You th don't think it is, but it's out there. You're looking at a pledge that was adulterated in uh, 1954, and the pledge has got its own story way back, too. It wasn't original either. It was added in. That uh, you start looking at all this, and it starts to paint a totally different picture on what you think you're looking at. And I just have to say, if you think you can live with that, this story right here tells you you can't. They're going to come and beat you down. Uh, you don't think that your family's safe when you don't make the right decision, you don't behave correctly. Go go think about that family that had all their, their sons and daughters stolen from them just because it was a fever. I don't think I pronounced it quite like that uh uh, Vince, Vinny, <laughs> I think it came out all contorted, Religio religiosity, I didn't quite say that, did I, but uh, no, your, your, your thoughts and your actions and your non-action is all underneath the scrutiny, YouTube videos could get demonetized if they have inappropriate comments, not only your statements, but somebody else's statements that they can tie to you, didn't we hear about that, if you walk by a gang member, you're considered associated with a gang member? YouTube videos get demonetized if the comments that are coming to your, your supposed account are inappropriate, without standard, just cause, no just cause, and they'll never tell it to you. More imposition all over. Now into the legal entities as well. You don't think that they, you have your constant, you're not established correctly? California's new law. No more all male boards. The board of directors for a corporation? You can't have them all male now. They gotta have a, a, maybe a token woman now. In this gender-neutral area, think about how distorted this whole thing is. And I don't have a problem with women anywhere. I'm just pointing out. You cannot make a determination on what your board is. The government's going to step in and make in social justice warriors of, of you all on a global level by the global parameters. Now, there's reasons possibly why they did this. The point is the government's coming to dictate to everyone, even the legal entities. And in particular, that's the fascism start. Remember, fascism controls industry and commerce and the entities that expose all, that, that promote that, don't they? That's why this thing is not just one type of thing. This is a conglomeration. Thank you for listening today. I hope something I said was insightful. Get, really, more importantly, get into something that, uh, fix something that, some wrong that you need to make right. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and all the place and the archives that you've uh, provided for us and the web pages and all that. Uh, Jules at ucy.tv, thank you for the simulcast. I do appreciate that and the continuing and, uh, hopefully things will be, are coming back around, uh, even in the minimal way there. And anybody who's been broadcasting, uh, rebroadcasting the broadcast, thank you very much. Thank you for all you folks that are in the other places that I can find that are commenting. I do appreciate that. I can't comment to you all, but uh, I do appreciate that you uh, at least give my give me a fair hearing, and hopefully you'll step up and do do something as well to help. And then, uh, like, like I usually, folks, I'll be with you next week. Take diffs or nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.